what's going on guys it's omni York, and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be telling you the biggest mistakes that i see players make in kvk now technically these are mistakes that are made in war in general so if you're in a civil war in your home kingdom then these will apply there as well most likely but the biggest wars in this game tend to be in kvk so in order to make this list i teamed up with my alliance leader and the officers of leo in kingdom 1568 huge shout out to you guys uh, i basically asked them if they could give me some things that they're seeing in the open fields and in flags and rallies mistakes that people are making in our kvk not just our alliance but other alliances other kingdoms in fact and they sent me a list of 13 different mistakes that they've been seeing a lot and i agree with every single one of them these are all massive mistakes but i wanted to consult them because they are kind of managing an entire alliance whereas i'm just a single fighter and so they have an eagle's eye view of the entire battlefield and i figured that they might have a better insight than me on this specific topic and they really did give me a huge list of really important things to avoid doing so shout out to those guys if you guys saw my power going down that's because it looks like we're zeroing this player i'm not really sure what's going on here but they are getting absolutely melted this is the second rally we've hit them with so yeah rest in pepperonis barney smash r.i.p his highest power ever was 48 million he's down to 46 million it's not looking good barney it's not looking good oof oof yeah that's a big oof but without further ado mistake number one that i see players making in kvk is sending the wrong troop type to rallies and garrisons this is a huge mistake that at least all of us have made probably one time in the past and the reason that this is so important to get right is not only is the leader of that rally or garrison giving you tons of stat buffs for the correct type so for example if you have charles martel in a flag and he has a full infantry build then if you send the wrong troop type that troop type those troops are not getting that those buffs right and sometimes we're talking 40 percent buffs 50 percent buffs to that troop type that you're missing out on because you sent archers by accident but it gets even worse you sending the wrong troop types to a rally can actually be the difference between the rally succeeding and failing let me show you guys an example of what i mean if we go into a commander like alexander let's say alexander is leading an infantry only only rally you look at his uh talent builds if he has a talent like elite soldiers this says when the army led by this commander contains only infantry units attack defense and health are increased by 2.5 percent when this has five points in it so imagine you have an entire rally filled with infantry except for one player that one player only makes up 10 percent of the entire rally capacity however since they sent the wrong troop type the entire rally loses out on seven and a half percent of stat buffs that's a massive amount of stats not only that but that's not the only talent right we have hold the line here that gives you this damage reduction taken if it's only infantry so there's a lot of different talents in here that rely on the rally being only infantry and by one player messing up even with one troop it can cause the entire rally to lose on massive amounts of stats and abilities and that can be the difference between the rally succeeding in the attack or failing and not only that but if you're not getting seven and a half percent of stats that means your rally is going to be taking more damage and dealing less damage and that converts into everyone in that rally taking more sev wounds and more deads so one player can single-handedly ruin that attack or defense and it's crucial it's crucial that you send the right troop type for a lot of different marches and it's not just alexander right we're talking about pretty much any infantry rally that uses this talent there's tons of different talents in the archer talent tree that also do a similar thing as this where it requires only that troop type so this is not just an infantry thing it's not just an alex thing always 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 send the right troop type the second mistake that i see players making is marching from too far away to reinforce a rally or a flag now the problem with this is let's say you're going to reinforce a rally and you're i don't know 70 kilometers away and you click reinforce that army the the rally itself has to reserve the capacity for your troops until you get there right because it's impossible for the game to start accepting reinforcements from other players and then once you arrive 
that would push the total unit capacity past the cap so it has to hold it has to put a hold on the space in the rally for you until you get there the problem with this is that the rally isn't actually getting the benefit of your troops being there until they arrive so other players can no longer reinforce that rally or that flag because you're taking up space but the rally is not even getting the benefit of you being there because you're too far away so the appropriate way to reinforce a flag or a rally is to send a march nearby so send it to an ally city that's close to the rally or close to the flag or just send it out into the open field near the flag or rally and then once you get there then you can hit the join button and the way that the reason that this is better is because you're not wasting space in that rally other players that are closer than you can join and get the effects of their joining immediately instead of waiting for you and if you're thinking well i'm only reinforcing from three minutes away three minutes is a massive amount of time in this game if the if the rally is close if we're neck and neck three minutes can make or break it the third mistake that I see players making is not covering enemy teleport spots effectively so what does this mean well if you're unfamiliar with uh with some with a tactic called covering teleport spots essentially what that is is I'm gonna give you an example here let's say my alliance was building a flag right in this area right because we were going to start pushing and hitting this enemy target so if we were doing that right what would we what we would want is for enemy cities to not be in this area because the closer the enemy cities are to this flag the easier it is for that player or that alliance to reinforce that flag because you can hop from one city to the next city and you can jump in and and kind of get somewhere really fast sort of like jumping from alliance uh, from resource node to resource node so what a lot of players do is they'll send an army into the open field to cover a teleport spot so in the same way that a barbarian covers a teleport spot so normally if this barbarian was dead i could teleport here because there's nothing in the way but he's there so an enemy uh, army or even a friendly army also blocks a teleport spot and so what people would do is obviously they couldn't teleport into this spot here because the pass is located in that area but for example an enemy could teleport right here there's nothing blocking them unless we put an army in that field right and so this is what a lot of players do they'll try to block the teleport spots available to the enemy that way it's harder for them to reinforce the flag that we're hitting if you are trying to do this tactic and players aren't doing it effectively one player messing up can ruin the entire tactic so what do i mean if everybody is effectively blocking these teleport spots but one player moves their army slightly to the left or slightly to the right and causes an 80 million power player to teleport in well that mega powerful player is probably enough to push the rest of the players in the open field out of their teleport spots and what does this mean this means that other power play other high power players can then teleport in so it's a domino effect uh the the first person to mess up those teleport spots typically will cause the entire strategy to crumble and so if you are doing this it is imperative that you move your armies around and cover those spots effectively make sure that players can't teleport in and you can even pull out your own targeted teleport just to get an idea to see okay should i move my troops a little to the left or a little to the right right you know it wouldn't be it wouldn't make sense to have your army right in this area because those barbarians are blocking it anyway but it would be it would make sense to have your army here so it's important that if you're doing this strategy do it right don't move your troops and the first person to mess up can cause the whole thing to collapse the fourth mistake that i'm constantly seeing is my allies are getting their armies dragged into enemy territory now what does this mean well let's say we are fighting in the open fields here and you know we are defending and the enemies are coming from the purple side this is the enemy we're the green we're the orange side here let's say they're coming into our territory and we're fighting over by the pass well my armies are going to get a buff from that because this orange is alliance territory which means we're going to get the buff from that uh from that fight right because if you don't know if you go into alliance technology there's a lot of different war things in here that involve territory if you're on territory you get buffs so what will happen is a player will come in here they'll start fighting and then they'll start retreating and if you're not paying attention your army is going to continue attacking them out of the territory into the neutral land and then into enemy territory and that's called getting dragged right that means you're not paying attention to that army and the enemy is retreating and pulling your army you're, you're kind of a magnet to their army and they're pulling you into their territory now suddenly you went from having a buff to them having a buff right and that's way worse it's way worse because it, it's not going from you know a buff to neutral it's going from you having a buff and them not having a buff to 
you not having a buff and them having a buff and so when you're fighting the open field it's better to obviously fight on your territory if you can and try to pull the enemy into your territory but if you can't do that then at least fight in neutral territory where neither side has those alliance buffs because they are pretty powerful and they can make a huge difference right a huge difference now the fifth mistake we're going to talk about is involving how you move your troops around the battlefield there's a really cool way to move your troops around back in the day if you wanted to hit a target you had to click on it you had to hit attack and then you had to choose the army and then they had to march there um, but a while ago they actually introduced a click and drag feature right or a tap and drag feature if you're using a mobile device and you can drag your armies to where you want them in the open field now if you're in a field fight where there's a ton of players fighting in the open field and you have nearby allied alliances that aren't your alliance clicking and dragging will in that open field scenario may actually cause you to accidentally attack an ally so the mistake that people are making is that in a complicated open field fighting scenario they're clicking and dragging instead of clicking on the enemy and clicking attack and this is again this is a small small change but it's the difference between knowing who you're attacking and not because if I click and drag over this barbarian you see the red logo show up on their head meaning that that's an enemy well that logo shows up if you click and drag over any other player army that isn't your alliance right I can't attack RK right here it, it turns blue so if I go to attack him I'm actually just gonna end up following him around because he's an ally but any other alliance member uh, any other alliance rather that isn't yours will show up as red and so you'll think that you're hitting an enemy when in reality you're actually hitting an allied alliance that's not your alliance so the game thinks it's an enemy but in reality it's not the sixth mistake that causes people to lose a ton of troops is standing too close to aoe this is a huge mistake so what do i mean by this well let's say we were rallying this flag and the commanders of this flag were a charles martel and an isongye that's a common thing that you could see in a flag especially in the early game uh, you always in fact you always say Isong, you always see isong in flags for this reason isong has a circular aoe which means any area around this flag when his skill goes off it's going to hit that area if you're standing too close to this flag when his aoe pops off your army is going to get hit by that aoe even though you're not even part of the rally hitting that flag what does this mean this means that you're actually going to get dead troops right you're going to get dead troops and that's a difference from fighting in the open field if you're fighting in the open field you only get deads if your hospital is full but if you're rallying a flag or a fort or a city that rally gets a hundred percent deads so when you're standing near a flag that's dealing aoe the flag is calculating you standing there as an enemy from the rally right because you're in the alliance that's that's part of the rally and that flag is acting as if you're being hit the same as the rally i hope that makes sense to you guys right this is a defending flag it's not an open field army it's a defending flag and that changes how the game will calculate uh severely wounded versus dead so again if you're gonna be fighting in the open field and there's rallies happening do not get too close to a flag that has aoe and likewise sometimes people rally with aoe commanders for this reason now a rally that deals aoe will usually do sev wounds instead of deads the reason for this is because rallies are on the map and so i think the game calculates it as an uh, uh, like a, um, an open field fight um and so it's a, it's a little bit less uh it's a little bit less strict with with rallies but still you don't want to get battle reports where you don't even hit the enemy and you take 20,000 sub wounds right and that's a reality that's not an exaggeration I've seen it happen it used to happen to me a very long time ago so don't stand too close to AoE you will regret it you will get dead and it's a completely useless mistake number seven is swarming a rally if it has very tanky commanders or Isong Ye. now this kind of ties in with the other one but if you're going to swarm a rally right you have to understand what's happening typically a rally will have about two million troops right and your maxed army will probably have 200,000 or if you have an army expansion it's 250 or 300,000 but still your army is such a small amount of troops compared to that rally that you're going to be sustaining massive damage if you decide to swarm them now this is even worse if it's a tanky commander you will get almost no value ever 
from swarming a tanky rally unless you are a t5 player you have maxed commanders and you're totally ready to take that trade in the hopes that you can change the tide of the interaction between the rally and the flag um, but most players will not want to take that massive damage right it is never worth it the better way to go about this is send your armies nearby and instead of surrounding the rally join the flag it's just better to join the flag join in on that attack or the defense and you're gonna be you're gonna have a much more meaningful impact and sustain less damage yourself mistake number eight is having low power players teleporting to the front lines of a battle now this is one that you know i i hope it doesn't offend other players but this is definitely an issue when it comes to again rallying objectives and reinforcing flags so for example this is a pass right here it's probably oh here sorry here's the pass uh there's a pass right here and let's say we are going to push out into this direction to fight off uh kingdom 54 this is out uh, the outlaws um if we were going to push this way we would have to build a flag here and then we would have to rally this flag so what's important in the scenario well it's important to know that the garrison to the flag that we built here would likely want to be a t5 player with max with max um commanders same thing for rallying this flag we would want the rally leader to be a t5 player with max legendary so if we decide now for for this example you can't teleport anywhere in this area or anywhere in this area with the whites right that's why there's no players here um if we were going to push in that direction let's say we have low power players on the front line so right now we have panda who's a powerful player we have boshi and we have a lot of other powerful players on the front lines but for example if we had instead of panda if we had somebody who was maybe a 24 million power player teleport in to this area well now that means a t5 player can't take that spot and the problem with that is that means they're gonna have to take a spot from farther away which means it's gonna take them longer to reinforce that rally it's gonna take longer for the rally to launch it's gonna take longer for them to uh, get to the flag to defend that flag and so what happens is the smaller power players think that they're helping and they are but the problem is the value of the location of their city is so high that it's actually better if somebody else is in their position right it's it's better if the low power players have to travel farther because you know they're making a smaller impact on the outcome of that fight now just to add on to that the way that you teleport actually matters so in this instance right here ideally this is kind of a messy teleport right these these cities are not in a perfect order um and what that causes is um fewer players can actually teleport in here now i i kind of stand corrected here because i thought that this space was teleportable but obviously it's not but for example if spade was teleported up to this spot right here then we might be able to put another player in uh this area and then we would still have spades um spot open but right now I can't teleport here um because it's off that tele uh, that territory so this is kind of an example and and you know granted this is actually not a criticism of my alliance because this area was actually filled a couple of days ago and so this is just the result of you know kind of where they could fit themselves uh so it's not like these guys messed this up this this was filled before uh, but this is just an example where you know if you teleport neatly on the edges of the territory it frees up more space for cities to fit in that area because it's important to know that in kvk you can't just teleport wherever you want i can't just teleport into this free space it doesn't let you in kvk you have to teleport onto territory and you know that makes territory very valuable which means space is tight you got to teleport in an organized fashion to fit the most amount of cities in a small amount of space mistake number nine is too much field fighting and not enough reinforcing of flags and rallies now the problem with this is that players don't know that this is a mistake they think hey I'm fighting the enemy we're in the open field I've got five marches out there I'm doing work and they think that they are helping and they are but the problem is that kvks are not won by field fighting you cannot win a kvk strictly by field fighting what you have to do is build flags and burn enemies right you gotta burn the enemy flags to make progress and so if all you're doing is field fighting well your troops are actually not contributing to the one thing that helps your alliance push out of its area right you're not helping with destroying the enemy flag if all you're doing is field fighting now the important thing to know is that field fighting is 
very important in KVK, right? It's very important, but you have to know when should I reinforce the flag versus when should I fight in the open field? So for example, if this, is, if we're, if we're rallying this flag and there's tons of enemies in this area, well, you should join the rally, right? And then send backup troops to the open field to help fight off the enemies in the open field. So they can't easily reinforce that rally. If you don't join that rally and all you do is fight in the open field, well, there's going to be less there might be less troops in that rally right if other players are offline or whatever and we can't keep that rally filled then you know you, you you're losing out that rally is losing out on the troops that you're using that could be in the rally but instead they're fighting the open field and if that rally dies it doesn't matter how much you fight in the open field because the rally lost and now you got to start all over again so it's all about finding a balance between you know supporting the open field while also still joining objectives joining rallies joining flags mistake number 10 is going offline once your hospital is full now this is something that people do in order to save their troops preserve their troops so they think hey my hospital's full i can't fight anymore i'm just gonna log off the problem with this is that you can actually clear a couple thousand space in your hospital pretty quickly, right? You can get enough helps to do it. You see here, I'm, I'm healing 3000 at a time because I know that with Alliance helps, this will go much faster. Now I know that Lilith sent out an email or a, I'm sorry, a kingdom mail or a server mail or whatever, um, saying that they're going to be changing this mechanic. However, they deleted that mail. So I don't know what this situation is with that, but regardless at the time of recording this, um, you can pretty quickly heal small batches of a few thousand troops right depending on how many alliance members are online and so when you fill your hospital it's not really an excuse to stop fighting because if you're going to be rallying a flag for example well rallies take 100 deads anyway so you know you're going to get deads whether or not your hospital is full and so by logging off well now the alliance doesn't have those troops that you would have sent that would have died regardless right and so what you could do instead is stop fighting for a couple of minutes and heal in batches of 1500 or 2000 or you know if you have a healing rune and you're you have an active alliance heal in batches of 3000 right and heal up and and get enough space for maybe 20,000 troops or something like that then you can reinforce a rally and most of them will be dead but let's say you get caught in the open field you know you're going to be fighting in the open field and you want to have a little bit of space in your hospital for some severely wounded to fill in that way you know mistakes don't ha end up happening and you get swarmed and now you take deads from an open field fight you don't want that want that to happen and i'm not encouraging that to happen but what i'm saying is people need to be less afraid of losing troops right you don't want to play stupid of course but um you don't you don't want to be super afraid of losing troops because guys you're 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 making troops to fight right you want them to fight in the open field in flags and rallies they're gonna die eventually right that's kind of their purpose i mean you're they are the the mechanism to making progress in kbk and in war and so if you're not using for them them for that then what are you going to use them for you don't really need that much troops to kill barbs so if you're not going to fight in a war and you're too afraid to lose troops well then why are you even training troops like you might as well save the resources and do something else mistake number 11 is not reading markers for direction and so if you look uh in your alliance there will be different markers on different cities and different things like that so right now this says rally cavalry what that means is the player that this is on is leading a rally that needs cavalry now these directions are crucial for kvk because for example if we built a flag over here right let's say we build a flag here and we're reinforcing this flag and you're in this flag and we're getting overwhelmed like we cannot keep up the reinforcements the enemies just completely outnumber us and we realize like hey defending this flag is actually causing us to get way more dead troops and we're not making any progress so we decide hey we're no longer going to defend this flag we're going to leave it we're going to let it burn and we're going to come back another time when hopefully we have more numbers than them and try to push at that time now if if that's the case the r4 will typically um put a marker on that flag that says do not reinforce or do not enter or let this burn something like that if you're not paying attention to those markers and everybody else leaves the flag and then a rally hits well then your troops are going to be the only things taking a full 2 million troop rally and that is going to hurt that's going to hurt a ton you're going to get massive deads and it's going to fill your hospital and it's going to be a complete waste right because there's nothing you as one army can do against a full rally and it's not just that there's going to be times where your r4 is going to put markers that say hey go here at this time utc or you know leave the open field here and help our allies 
lies in the other side of the map and if you're not watching those directives and you're not in a discord call or something like that then you're not really going to know where the fighting is happening and where you you could be most useful this is part of the reason why it's important to be an alliance that speaks a language that you understand because sometimes the translate feature in the game is not great and you might not understand the different directives that are being put on these markers and then you're you're kind of fighting in the dark right and that's not really that useful mistake number 12 is using your best commanders to reinforce a flag when you are not going to be the garrison leader this is a, a mistake that people obviously don't realize that they're making or they don't know why it's a mistake so let's say for again for example we have a flag here and it is defending with a you know charles isonge right and some t5 well is defending that flag because they have max tech and expertise legendaries if you reinforce that flag with infantry and you reinforce it with your maxed Richard maxed Martel well the problem is that the your commanders don't actually matter in that fight if you guys didn't know the the leader of that garrison is the only one whose commanders matter you could literally reinforce a flag with Lohar and Boudica with 200,000 infantry and that would be the same as reinforcing the flag with a maxed Richard maxed Martel and again the reason for that is because the garrison captain is the only one who has commanders in the flag that matter the damage formula and calculation is using those commanders to determine the outcome of the fight and the rest of the commanders in that flag literally are not having an effect on the fight at all now the only caveat to this is if you are reinforcing from far away and there's a chance that you can get caught in the open field if there is that chance then send good armies because you you don't want your low harbutica to get swarmed in the open field because it's going to die in an instant right um so if there's that chance then yes use good commanders but if there's a very small chance that your army gets caught in the open field on the way to or from reinforcing that flag then send bad armies it doesn't matter what you send save your better commanders for open field fighting right it's just a better use of them and they're not useful inside that flag if they're not going to be the garrison captain mistake number 13 is just a pet peeve but this one is sending your armies into areas where your alliance is trying to build a flag or teleport into now this is a mistake because it slows down the progress of a push so for example if i send a march out here onto the field and i go right over here and let's say my army's just sitting here chilling it's afk i'm responding to a text or something like that and i'm not paying attention if my alliance wants to build a flag and it just so happens that they want to build it exactly where my army is well they can't because my army is in the way and so if you see alliance markers in the field saying this is where the next flag's going to go this is where the next flag's going to go don't put your armies in that field because you don't the 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 r4s and the the leaders of the alliance are going to be trying to build and you're going to just be in the way and they're going to have to message you and say hey move your troops or they're going to have to wait for you to log back on and it's just going to slow down the push from your alliance and that's it's just not a good look right it's not a good look you don't want to be the guy you don't want to be the girl that's in the way of the progress single-handedly it just it feels bad now the final tip i want to give you guys is never ever ever never ever ever teleport onto the territory of another alliance in a zone that you do not have complete control over and then go offline um, this i shouldn't even have to tell you guys but you know this is a huge mistake that i'm always seeing players make you know if there's a massive push into a zone and then you guys you, you know we're halfway into the zone and and you think okay we're doing really well we're probably gonna have control over it and then you log off well, what happens if three hours later, the enemies just completely dominate the battlefield and push our territory all the way back, right? You're an hour into your nap and you think you're safe because you're on Alliance territory. But in, in fact, you know, we couldn't hold that territory. And so now your city is exposed to rallies. And, you know, again, this is not something that I should have to say, but, you know, if you are not on your Alliance territory, you can get rallied you know if you're unless you're unless you're in your safe zone that's completely locked down you can get rallied if you're off alliance territory that means you know even if you teleport onto a territory of some other alliance in your kingdom so if i teleport onto territory that's owned by k and qf well it's not leo territory even though it's the same kingdom it's not leo territory which means i can get rallied and so never log off in a zone 
where you are not on alliance territory with a bubble if there's the chance that the territory can go away before you can log back in now hopefully you guys found these tips useful hopefully at least one of them gave you some insight into things that maybe you yourself can improve when entering kvk if you made it all the way to the end of this video hopefully you guys will drop a thumbs up on it and subscribe to the channel with clicking the bell to turn notifications on that would really really help me out a ton it helps my channel a bunch i'm getting super close to 10,000 subscribers and i can't wait to celebrate that with you guys comment down below if you have any more suggestions or mistakes that you see players making in kvk or if you have any questions about any of the things that i've talked about in this video again drop a comment down below i'll try to respond to as many of you guys as i can as always my social media links are in the description below as well as my discord and my twitch i typically stream at least once or twice a week on twitch rise of kingdom so if you guys want to come check me out over there i can answer your questions in real time there's also a link in the description if you want to download rise of kingdoms for your pc i play it on blue stacks i love it so give it a try down there and if you guys didn't know i did recently launch my merch for the omni arc channel i think this came out really really well this t-shirt just came in the mail i didn't get a chance to wash it yet which is why i didn't wear it for the video but link is going to be in the description for the merch if you guys want to check it out and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace